In this video you will learn what is elementref, view child and view children inside Angular. And here I already prepared for us a small component. As you can see I don't only have app component HTML and TS, but I also create child component HTML. This is how it looks like. This is just a small component with counter and two methods, increment and decrement, which increases or decreases our count. And inside our template, we simply render this count. What I want to do now, I want to render inside our app component, our child component. As you can see in browser, we rendered zero. This is exactly the value of the count inside our child component. Now the question is how we can from the parent increase our counter. And actually in order to do that, I want to create here on the top a button. And we can name this button increment child. And here I want to create a click event with increment. Now inside our app component, let's create a function which is called increment. And inside here we somehow need to call a function from our child. How can we do that? And actually for this we can use a thing which is called view child. We can get access of our child component inside our parent. This is why here I want to write view child with add symbol. And here inside I'm writing child component. This is exactly the reference to the component. As a second parameter I'm providing here options with static true. What does it mean? We are telling Angular that this child component is not wrapped within GIF and this component is always there. Then Angular should not do that many lifecycle checks. And here we are saying that this is a child with question mark and this is a child component. Why we are writing here child with question mark? Because on initialize, before our child is not rendered, we don't have and it is an undefined. This is why by default it is undefined, but later it will be a reference to our child component. Now inside our increment, I want to console log our child so we can see what it is at all. And obviously it must be this child. As you can see in browser, we see a button increment child and this is our child. I am clicking here and this is what we are getting. We are getting a reference to our child component. And what we can do now here, we can call this dot child. Now here we must put question mark because it might be undefined dot increment. And this is exactly how you can call methods from your child component. Let's check this out. I am reloading the page. I am clicking here and as you can see our counter increases, which essentially means that we are calling a method from our child and we are changing a counter. So as you can see, view child allows us to get access to the child component and do whatever we want with it. But I must tell you that this is not a bad approach because this is more like approach where you directly access your element and you do something with it. The default way to implement something inside Angular is by using inputs and outputs, which actually means inside your child, if you want a parent to call increment method, then you must give here a possibility to access this increment method. We should not brute force this increment method through your child. Sure, we can do that, but this is not the best approach if you can solve your problem with inputs and outputs. So now you know what is view child, but essentially we can use view child not only with components, but also with elements. This is why here what I want to do on our button, I want to write hash button. And actually this hash button is element ref, which means this is a reference to this specific element. And now here we can jump inside our app component and I will copy paste this view child. And now here, instead of component, we can write just a string, button. Because this is just a name of this hash, which means this hash is button, it can be any name, and here we are using this name. And again, we are providing here static true, because this element is always there, and we can change this child to the button reference. And here we must change it, because it is not child anymore, this is element reference. And inside we must provide what it is. This is HTML button element. And now the question is how we can change it. And actually here we can write implements after view init. Why we are using after view init and not ng on init? Because we want to make sure that our DOM element is there. This is why here we can write ng after view init. And I want to change an inner HTML inside our button. 
But in order to do that, we want to make sure that we have the button. This is why here we can write this dot button reference dot and we must also put here question mark because it can be undefined and here we have a native element this is exactly the dom element that we want to access and if we have it then we are using it like button reference native element dot for example in html and we want to assign here foo so what we are doing we are just changing the text inside our button after view in it. Let's check this out. As you can see in browser, our button was changed and here we see the text foo, which actually means you can use view child not just to access your components, which are children, but also to access just normal DOM elements. Which brings us to the view children. If you have several elements, you might want to get a list of them. This is why here inside HTML, I want to make several buttons and I want to make several children. Now inside our TS, we want to access the list of them. This is why here we will write view children instead of view child. And inside we are doing exactly the same. We have here child component, but we don't need to provide static true. Now here we can say that we have children. And again with question mark, because they might be not there. And we're using here query list. So what is this? This is the list of our elements. And inside we are just writing child component and it will be the array. What I want to test now, I just want to console log the access to these elements. So we can write here this dot children. As you can see, it might be undefined and this is by question mark. And for every single children, we want to console log our child. So let's just write here child comma child. And let's look in browser. As you can see here, we got access to all our children in a row because in this case, this children is an array. You can see it here. This is a query list of our child components. And in exactly the same way we can do with our DOM elements. So we can just copy paste this code and we can use here button. And in this case here, we will get our buttons ref and it will be a query list of our buttons, which will be an element ref of HTML button element. So this must return for us an array of buttons and I want to copy paste this code and write here buttons ref for which we are getting access to every button ref and I want to console log our button ref that we have here. As you can see in browser we are getting full access to all buttons on our page and we can do whatever we prefer with them. So again what we have here we have an element ref which is a reference to our element inside our markup. Secondly, we have view child and we're using it to get access to our child component or child DOM element. And lastly, we have here view children, which gets us the full access to the array of our components or the array of our DOM elements. And actually, if you're interested to know what map methods we have inside Angular, like switch map, concat map, flat map, I covered all them in this video.